Internet, welcome to Game Theory, the show that just keeps picking away at the hidden lore of Minecraft. Cause let's face it, Minecraft isn't one of those games that explicitly tells you what's going on. Instead, it implies its lore through world design, spawn behavior, sound effects, and character appearances, all for investigators like us to uncover. A perfect example of this implicit lore came during Minecraft Live's reveal of the game's upcoming Caves and Cliffs update, when the team introduced us to the newest and most interesting mob to date, the Warden. What? Did we just see? They don't outright tell us what's going on with the warden, but you only need to take one look at its chest and the souls that are trapped inside to tell that there's a story behind this guy. Ordinarily, I'd wait until the warden was actually in the game so we could get the full picture of what its behavior and spawn conditions are like before we begin theorizing, but we've already got ourselves a ton of information to work with here. I mean, just look at this thing. The green texture of its skin is practically identical to the material used for end portal blocks. This mob is practically begging for a theory. Mmm, so you could say it's sort of an unsolved mystery. Uh, you could. Excuse me, why is there a big neon green block creature in my video? <laughs> I'm Dream, I'm a Minecraft speedrunner, and I love talking about unsolved mysteries of Minecraft from time to time. I was actually just running away from some hunters and I wound up in the wrong seed. And don't knock the green, I've seen your thumbnails. You're a Minecraft speedrunner, sure. Early 2008 memes called, they want their stick boys back. Says the guy who is literally a dancing cardboard cutout. Touche. So, should we just end this awkward justification of why we're collaborating and just start talking about the warden? That's probably a good idea. Let's let's end the cringe. Oh, <laughs> when you're here, the cringe never ends. I just simultaneously whipped and nanaid! Thanks, editors. Like I said. So even though the Caves and Cliffs update adding the wardens to the game isn't expected to come out until summer of 2021, almost a year from now, we already know a lot about these guys. For starters, this new warden mob was introduced alongside another new feature coming to the cave biome, the Skulk, a seemingly natural growth that appears in deep caves. As demonstrated in the gameplay reveal, the Skulk's most interesting feature is that it can sense sounds. According to what we've been told, the Skulk can detect footsteps, projectiles, and blocks being placed. And wool, which is presumably soft enough to insulate any vibrations, can prevent it from reacting. This actually gives us a behavioral connection between the Skulk and the Warden. The Warden is blind, meaning that it senses players by reacting to things like sound and vibration, just like the Skulk does. Add that to the fact that the Warden and Skulk are found together in caves and share a very similar visual design, and it feels like the Warden might be some sort of naturally occurring creature. Maybe something that grew out of the Skulk? Or maybe the Skulk evolved? Possibly, but I wouldn't be so quick to jump to that conclusion. When asked about whether the Warden and Skulk are part of the same species, developer Brandon Pierce said this, quote, they're made of the same stuff at the very least, eyeball emoji. That seems like a highly dodgy answer. Were they made that way by Mother Nature? Or is he implying that the Warden is perhaps a creature that was made through more artificial means? perhaps by an ancient race of builders who had harvested Skulk and found a way to use it in their contraptions. Uh, that seems like a bit of a stretch. I actually don't think I'm overanalyzing this. Viewers of this channel know that we've gathered a lot of evidence over the last year that there was once a great civilization of builders in this game. A civilization that built temples and mines long ago and then was forced to abandon them all for some unknown reason. So we have a good idea that they existed. And going back to the design detail that immediately caught my eye about the Wardens, you look at the warden's chest and find that where you'd expect to see a beating heart, you instead see caged souls. Souls, plural. I don't know of many natural creatures that are born with multiple souls. It's highly suggestive of an origin that involves being created somehow, by creators who are perhaps harnessing souls as an energy source. And in case you think that I'm extrapolating too much from that little visual detail, it was once again confirmed by Minecraft gameplay developer Brandon Pierce, who when asked about the warden's blue chest patch on Twitter, responded with, quote, I can't confirm anything, but it definitely sounds like a heartbeat, and the texture is definitely reminiscent of souls. And in case you missed it when we talked about it earlier on this channel, this year's Minecraft dungeon game basically confirmed that certain items in the Minecraft franchise are built with literal souls that are being used as an energy source. Or, as the official Twitter account put it, quote, a true adventurer puts their soul into everything they do, and the truest adventurers put other people's souls in it too. In that episode, we concluded that the Vex that evokers create are comprised of souls, and that opens
opens the door to other sorts of artificially created mobs also built from souls, hence the warden. So you're saying that the warden mob might be some sort of artificial construct made using soul sand? Yeah, I think so. I mean, looking across all my past theories in this game, there's one common theme that keeps appearing. Experiments with the creation of life. When you look at the design and story details of the various mobs throughout Minecraft, it all ties back to this recurring quest to become almost like God, with power over life and death. I've done major episodes looking into all this, but based on the evidence, the Illagers seem to have been booted out of the Villager Society because they were experimenting with creating life. The Iron Golems seem to be an early stepping stone of some ancient race trying to create sentient creatures. The Wither itself seems like it was a failed experiment to create life using soul sand. And the list goes on for lots of other mobs. And so the Warden being this combination of skulk and souls feels like it would be a natural extension to all of this. It was created. It was built. But built for what? That's the question. Well, it's probably related to what you mentioned before. The Wardens appear to be made of the same stuff as end portal blocks. I mean, I'd recognize that eerie shade of green anywhere. So if these Wardens were artificially constructed, it might have happened at around the same time that the end portals themselves were being built. Plus, look at their name. Remember that end portals are found in strongholds, a place fortified so as to protect it against attack. Now, consider the name Warden. These days, the most common use of the word Warden is when talking about prison wardens, the supervisors who are placed in charge of keeping people in a secured structure. But the term Warden actually has a much more general meaning too. A person charged with the care or supervision of persons, animals, or things. A keeper. Maybe they were built as guards to supervise or protect the end portals. Huh, it's a pretty good observation. Not bad for a guy who once tweeted that you ate your cat's poop. Well, I can't really defend myself there, can I? But you're totally right. The name Stronghold and Warden, as well as the color palette and the design, heck, even the fact that both Wardens and Strongholds are found in the deepest layers of the overworld, all of it implies some sort of relationship. You know, my exploration in the lore of Minecraft started with the Enderman, and what I found in that first episode is what convinced me that there is actual lore in this game. In that theory, I concluded that the Endermen are actually an ancient race of builders who, eons ago, created end portals inside of strongholds in an attempt to flee the overworld, only to discover too late that it was a one-way trip. The Endermen we see today are the descendants of those ancient builders who, through a combination of evolution and a chorus fruit diet, have become almost unrecognizable, except for their ability to pick up and carry blocks and a few choice vocal lines. When creating that stronghold, it would have made sense for those builders to create some kind of guard to hold down the fort. After all, what good is a stronghold if you have no one to protect it against invaders? Dream, dream, that's your line. Uh, also, only a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you end up liking this video, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. Enjoy the video. Not exactly what I was going for, but seamless save, buddy. <laughs> Thanks. Anyway, I think all of this paints a pretty compelling picture. After creating the overworld villages and the iron golems, the ancient builders continued their pursuits. They experimented with all sorts of things, including experimenting with constructs made using souls. This kind of experimentation is what would eventually unleash the horror that is the Wither, but it's also what gave rise to their automaton buddy, the Warden, built with the same material that they were using when they constructed the end portal blocks, which served as the vehicle for their final escape away from the underworld. Perhaps they left through those end portals expecting to return shortly after, leaving the Warden as a line of defense against anyone who might try to follow them, but they never returned, and the Wardens, believing that their masters had abandoned them, wandered away. They ventured deeper and deeper underground, finding a bio more suited to creatures that were created to exist in the dark, where they exist to this day, waiting for us to stumble across them. I mean, if that's actually what happened, it would explain a lot, like the Warden's name and why it seems to have multiple souls in its chest. That's definitely a possibility, but I've been doing research, and it's also possible the Skulk somehow creeped and crawled until it came into contact with Soul Sand and found a way to harness the energy of those souls to naturally spawn the Warden. Sure, I mean, the idea of a plant-like growth somehow doing this seems a bit far-fetched, and it wouldn't really match with the Warden name but it's definitely possible. According to developer Brandon Pierce, you could definitely argue that the Skulk in general is sentient. Happy face. It's weird that he says the Skulk is sentient in general. Like, could all the Skulk we see be part of some sort of hive mind with the Wardens in charge or representing what happens when it hits some soul sand? Or what about a different possibility? Maybe the Skulk attached itself to an Iron Golem. In the Iron Golem's base model, we see that they're covered with vine growth. What if vines weren't the only plant-like growth that decided to make an Iron Golem their home? Could the Skulk 
disrupt or somehow take over an iron golem? It's not a bad thought. As confirmed on Twitter, the Skulk is bigger and more massive than the golem, and it's even more powerful but still possessing the same long arms. But again, it doesn't explain the souls or the name or the connection back to the end portal blocks, which is why my money's on it being an artificial creation by some ancient race. TLDR, I'm just really excited to dive into this update once it's finally out. It definitely does seem like Mojang has been putting more time into the lore department these days. So this isn't one of those days where we get to say that we solved the mystery of the Warden and the Skulk. It's something that we'll have to do together as a community. And that's part of why I wanted to start having this conversation now. Because not only is it something that we all have to look forward to, but it's also something that I think we should keep in mind as we continue to explore other parts of the Minecraft lore. Ooh, okay, this is, this is the part where you say the thing, right? You made it to the end of the video, which means that you liked it and should therefore subscribe? No, 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 the other thing, you know, the, but hey, that's just a theory. Wow, that was, uh, that was worse than your answers in the Mr. Beast tournament. <laughs> I still technically finished ahead of you, Galaxy Brain. Only because you were voted back in. Eh, technicality. Well, from one loser to a fellow loser, thanks for coming on. And you know what? It is indeed time to say, but hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. And uh, good luck with those hunters over there. Dream. Come here, Dream. Wait, are we on game theory? <laughs>